So let's do some shorter examples that illustrate some interesting phenomena. They may and well like leave us philosophically more mystified than we were before, but uh, it is what it is, I say. say. Um, right, so I'm going to write some really short snippets of code, and we'll do the same process and think about it a little bit. So maybe this one I'll call quantum flip coin. Although don't take the names of these subroutines too seriously. Uh, and this will just be like new qubit A, Hadamard A. Okay, so this is literally, uh, you know, only one instruction. So it's a bit overkill to draw the whole tree for it. If, you know, we're just going to figure out what is the final state. Kind of know the final state, but let's just go ahead and draw the whole tree. So, okay, we have one qubit. All our nodes are just going to be 0 or 1. It's initially 0, and then we do Hadamard on 0. So that's, you get to 0 or 1. This is amplitude root a half. This is root amplitude root a half. And that's it. Like, the final state is, there's no collating to do. Like, you know, each outcome here only appears one time. So, okay, I should say, we write the final amplitudes at the bottom. This is, we multiplied everything along the path. There's only one thing. Multiplied everything along the path. There's only one thing. There's no collating to do because each outcome only occurs once. So we're done. You know, final state is like root a half amplitude on zero, root a half amplitude on one. Okay, and if we were to now hypothetically do extract all, you know, it would be like 50-50 whether we got 0 or 1. Okay, so from outsider's perspective, you run this code, with ends with extract all, just half the time prints 0, half the time prints 1. Um, okay, now I'm going to do some similar uh, example over here. But I'm just going to throw a toggle in as the first step. So effectively, I'm just going to like watch what happens when you do Hadamard on um, a 1, which we kind of already know what happens, but let's do it. Let's do quantum flip coin part 2. So we'll do new qubit A, and then we'll toggle it. We'll like go ahead and do the whole tree. So again, there's one qubit, it's 0. And then we toggle it, so with all the amplitude, amplitude 1, you go to 1. And now we Hadamard, 0, 1. With Hadamard, 1 goes to 0 with amplitude root a half. And 1 goes to 1 with amplitude root minus a half. OK, now we're done. Now we write the final amplitude outcomes at the bottom. So here we get 1 times root a half. Here we get 1 times minus root a half. Now we do also here do the collation step, but there's nothing to collate, so we're kind of done. And the final state is root half amplitude on zero, root half amplitude, sorry, minus root half amplitude on one. This is a different state than we got before. On the other hand, it is true that if we were to do extract all now, it would again be like 50-50, whether we get 0 or 1. This came up last time. This is possible that like, you know, you get to two different states, but like the, the visible output you see is the same. And if these were the only experiments that the physicists had to like explain way back in like 1910, then probably they wouldn't like work out this mathematical model for the underlying states because they lead to the same outcome, 50-50. From the point of view that you have so far, you would just probably say to yourself, or another model that would explain this, is just uh, the Hadamard instruction just like wipes out the qubit's value and replaces it 50-50 by 0 or 1. It's exactly like a coin flip. That's a model the physicist could have come up with that explains this behavior so far. But now I'll show you some more examples that you can physically do 
which would like refute the hypothesis that that's how Hadamard works. And they confirm that Hadamard works, well, this way I'm actually doing with the trees and everything. So uh, now let me show you some more code that you can do that would kind of reveal to you that it's not just the case that like Hadamard wipes out your qubit and replaces it with like a random bit. So I'll call this quantum unflip coin. And here's the code, new qubit A, Hadamard A. So, so far it looks like quantum flip coin. Next instruction, Hadamard A again. And that's it. Okay, so again, this physically corresponds to like, I don't know, you take your photon and you get it vertically polarized, that's maybe this, and then you pass it through some quartz slab of a certain thickness, and that corresponds to doing a Hadamard, and then you pass it through another quartz slab of the same thick thickness, and that corresponds to doing Hadamard again. Or something like that. If it's electrons, then you fire some microwaves at them for a certain amount of time. Okay. So, uh, yeah, let's just draw the tree for this. So, okay, new qubit A. So, again, uh, we start out at zero, this is A. And then Hadamard A. So, it's going to look exactly like this to start. So, we could have just continued that tree over there, but let's redraw it. Root a half, root a half. Okay, but now we do another Hadamard. So, okay, in this world where it's zero, it's going to look like a copy of this. Zero, one, root a half root a half, and one, well, it's going to look like this, oh, well, the bottom part of this, zero, one, um, root a half, and negative root a half. Okay, so that's finished with the instructions. Now we do the thing where we write the final amplitude outcomes down here by multiplying along the path. So this is root a half times root a half, which is half. This is root a half times root a half, which is also half root a half times root a half, which is half, root a half times negative root a half, which is negative half. Okay. We're still not finally done because like we gotta now do the collation. So like the final state, uh, final state, it has like some amplitude on uh, zero and some amplitude on one. And how much is on zero? Well, we got a half plus a half, so that's one. And uh, how much amplitude on one? We got a half plus negative a half, which is zero. Remember, this is like an amplitude, a number. This is like the basic value. So that's the final state with this code. And you know, it's conventional, again, like if you have an amplitude zero on something, you just don't mention it. And also it's conventional if you have amplitude one on something, you just don't say the one. So like this is also just sometimes called zero. Um, so what happens, this code, it starts the new qubit at zero, you do Hadamard twice in a row, the new state is zero. So in particular, that means if you were to do like, you know, extract all, you'd see 100% uh, the time you'd see zero. And this might refute your hypothesis if you had it before that like Hadamard just like takes a bit and like randomizes it. Because like we randomize it, we randomize it again, it should still be 50 50, but it's not. You run this code 100% of the time you see zero. I mean, you do this physical experiment, you always see zero. Um, so now you have to get into like some kind of crazy, you know, if you want to stick with like the hypothesis that like this Hadamard instruction like randomizes a bit, you'd also have to add that like, okay, it randomizes the bit, but maybe it remembers that it used to be zero. It's not like that. Like this is what it's really like. Um, but it's by doing these experiments that, you know, uh, the physicists in the 1910s or whatever figured out that this is how nature works. Mm -hmm. This is like an extremely, I think, 
Well, it's pretty philosophically similar to like the double slit experiment that people always talk about. I never really understood exactly what the double slit experiment was trying to explain to you. Like somehow it was supposed to explain that something funny is happening. I always think they should explain this one. Like this one, it's more clear what is happening and that like a surprising thing is happening. Yep. Yeah, probably I'm exaggerating a little because um, this is maybe what like in an alternate universe that is easier to explain maybe what physicists were doing. Also, if people correct me if I'm wrong because I don't know that much about physics or history of physics. Um, one thing that is always um, frightening to me about physics is that you know here we're working with like bits or qubits and like for every if you have two qubits there's like four possibilities if you have and like a superposition state is like four numbers one for each of the possibilities if you go to a physics class and like learn quantum mechanics like their very first uh, you know example instead of talking about like the polarization state of a photon which is like zero or one has two possibilities they'll talk about maybe the position of the photon the position of a photon uh, getting to your point is like um, some number on like the real line, right? So there are uncountably infinitely many possibilities for it. And then like a superposition state has like uncountably many amplitudes. It's like pretty scary. It's like, oh, like I, I know how to like add up little numbers. And like now, but like example one in physics, like we're already like uncountably infinitely many amplitudes that are like canceling and things. Um, so that's why like I think it's easier to like talk about qubits and things. Why historically, I think they were more like analyzing, again, I don't know history of physics so well, but like things like, you know, the position and like momentum of like, you know, subatomic particles that they can probe in this way. And so it was like even harder on them because I had to figure out these rules uh, where there's like uncountably many infinite uh, amplitudes and things. Um, don't even know if there were experiments that like, uh, led them to exactly this. I know this like stern gerlach experiment which is like from the 30s where you really just have like one electron and it has like a basic state with two possibilities, spin up or spin down. It's really about um, just putting an electron through like an electromagnetic field and watching if it deflects this way or that way. Um, but I guess like historically it wasn't quite like this neat little story I'm, I'm telling. But I, I should figure out exactly, I mean I think it was complicated how they were led to these rules. Okay, let me tell one more example. It's gonna be the same, but like we're gonna put a toggle in. Basically, we're gonna do two Hadamards in a row, but starting from one rather than starting from zero. Okay, so I'll draw the diagram here relatively quickly, and you can check to see if I made a mistake or not. Okay, I get to zero, I get to one, this is root a half, this is root a half, this is minus root a half, root a half, zero, one. Okay, this path we have a half, this path we have a half. This path, we have minus a half. This path, we have plus a half. Okay, so the final state has amplitude. Okay, on zero, we have a half and negative a half. So we have amplitude zero on zero. And on one, we have half and half. So we got amplitude one on one. Okay, and similarly, this is like all the amplitude is on one and no amplitude on zero. So like that's also just called one. Okay, so in short, uh, here we kind of started the qubit. This is basically to like start the qubit in state one. We saw that if you start the qubit in state one and do two Hadamards, you get to one again. And uh, so again, if you were to extract all, you would see a hundred percent chance of seeing one. So again, there's a couple points to make here. Um, I guess uh, it's 
to really kind of emphasize is that, like, again, you know, if you do Hadamard, it might look like, oh, it's like, if you just do Hadamard and get into, like, state root half amplitude on 0 and root half amplitude on 1, mm, you might sort of try to think about, like, how is this different from flipping a coin? And uh, let me try to say this. Maybe it won't resonate with you that much yet, but I'll, I'll say it anyways. Let's say you flip a coin. Heads is 0 and tails is 1. You flip a coin, and it lands on the table, but you cover it up and you don't look at it yet. So um, it would be mathematically reasonable for you to say, I describe this situation as half probability on 0 and half probability on 1. That statement is uh, quantifying your lack of knowledge of the true state. And it's fine. You can reason about what will happen if a computer were to do future things on this. Um, but you would, at the same time, in the back of your mind, say, well, Actually, the true state is either 100% 0 or 100% 1. I mean, it's actually either heads or tails. Like, I just, by saying it's 50-50 heads or tails, it's just reflecting my lack of knowledge of the true state. I haven't looked at it yet. But, like, when you get out a qubit and you had a mart it and get it to this state, it's not like it's secretly decided, like, this qubit is not like, I'm 0. Like, if you measure me, I'm going to be 0. Or that's like, I've decided to be 1. Like, if you measure me, I'm going to become 1. Its true state is this. Like, this is its true, genuine physical state. It doesn't, ref you know, involve like our lack of knowledge of is it really zero or is it really one. Like, this superposition is the actual physical state of it. And uh, you just got to accept that. <laughs> and these kinds of experiments are a way to like verify that because like it hasn't decided if it's zero or one yet because if you start in this state and do another Hadamard, it goes to 100% zero or 100 you know, all amplitude on zero. But if you start in this state and like do another Hadamard, it goes to all its amplitude on one. So that's, that's the way it is.